dear all i would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of waste management in this session i am going to discuss waste characteristics so if i talk about the waste characteristics you need to talk about chemical and physical characteristics individually so before beginning of the session i request everybody to like share and subscribe my channel if you are pleased with my channel i request you to share this same content with uh, other students or other uh, lecturers those who are working on this domain so moving on to the discussion first of all we'll be talking about the importance of physical and chemical characteristics for um, the main purpose of identifying or main purpose of analyzing uh, the physical and chemical characteristics we'll be identifying it is it, it will be helpful for segregation or it will identify or the composition or to understand the like uh, features okay uh, whether the waste is suitable for disposal some amount of waste can be utilized for fuel so because of those factors we need to consider physical and chemical characters okay so let's understand uh, the physical and the chemical characteristics of a waste independently moving on to the physical characteristics so consider a certain amount of waste we need to consider its density then moisture content size okay etc if i want to have the information about like a chemical characteristics so, where, so like a, in the group of waste we can see like lipids then carbohydrates will be present proteins will be available natural fibers synthetic and organic material non combustible heating value uh, then we can check the ultimate analysis to understand the composition then proximate analysis and we can verify the calorific value also so these are the significance of waste characteristics at least we need to analyze okay what is the nature what kind of waste this uh, what are the features we need to identify the phys physical features as well as chemical features we will be discussing individually so moving on to the further discussion i'm first of all i'm talking about the physical characteristics what is the meaning of physical characteristics of waste okay so uh, the first in the foremost thing we need to identify one of the property called the density what is the density density is nothing but it is a ratio of uh, mass upon volume okay so the unit is uh, kilogram per meter cube that is a unit of density so density of a waste that is a ratio of mass per unit volume suppose uh, we can uh, like uh, suppose we need to go for like a uh, transfer station or disposal at that time we will identify the density density has to be measured okay uh, then the optimum density of a waste required for a disposal has to be computed whenever you are going for a like a waste disposal for example landfilling you need to identify the density density is very important suppose if you are hiring a vehicle like uh, either it may be compactor vehicle or non compactor vehicle so you need to compute the density so density is one of the most important physical uh, parameter one more important thing i want to add that upper limit of the density and the conservative conservative estimate in place density for a waste of sanitary landfill is about 600 kg per uh, meter cube at least uh, for every uh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, waste material it should have some certain optimum uh, level of density then only it will be suitable for waste disposal so that is the significance of density okay so density is considered whenever you are going for like a disposal and landfilling etc moving on to the another uh, parameter that is generally called moisture content what is moisture content moisture content is the difference between wet weight and dry weight upon the wet weight usually moisture content is expressed in terms of percentage so if a waste is eligible for combustion its moisture content should be as minimum as possible if there are moisture content in a particular waste then it is not eligible for uh, going for combustion it can uh, it can be utilized for like incineration pyrolysis etc i'll let you know what is the meaning of incineration pyrolysis uh, like combustion etc these are the different waste disposal method so here the moisture content is defined as the ratio of weight of the water that means wet weight minus dry weight upon the total weight of the wet waste the moisture increases the weight of the solid waste and thereby cost of collection and transport also will be increased so whenever you are going for like a transportation uh, the moisture content should be as minimum as possible okay uh, it should be at the lowest at the lowest level else the transportation charge will be high because we cannot accommodate that much of waste in the vehicle 
A typical range of moisture content is varies from 20% to 40%. Moisture content is normally high, especially in the domestic waste, where uh, the leftover food, the carbohydrate content is more. Okay. So these are the basic information about moisture content. Also, it depends on the season, especially during the monsoon season, the moisture content will be very much high. Kindly note these valuable points. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the other parameter, like the size. We'll understand about the size. Okay, so why size is necessary? Uh, the main importance of size is actually at the type of transfer station. So, you know, transfer station, uh, that is actually the place where it lies between waste generation and uh, disposal area. Uh, the main purpose of transfer station is segregation. Okay, segregation will be done in the transfer station. Uh, by segregation because some amount of uh, material can be valuable material can be separated from the waste also some amount of uh, waste like a uh, plastic can be recycled okay three are constructed so transfer station that one of the play uh, it it plays major role for such segregation and disposal so at the time of like the segregation we need to know the size of the waste so size has to be measured it will be measured in terms of micrometer okay maybe my uh, 10 micrometer in the range so measurement of size distribution of a particle in the waste stream is important because its significance in the design of mechanical separator as well as shredders. So separators like a filtration, then shredders, why shredders are required? Like uh, breaking uh, the complex amount of the high, uh, like a complex waste material into simple one. That is the importance of shredders. Uh, the result of size distribution ana analysis are expressed in the manner of so, uh, like a soil particle analysis, we can go for one ana simple analysis called soil particle analysis to estimate the size distribution. The variation in the size can be identified by using soil particle analysis. I think it's clear to everybody. So, why we are considering the size? Okay. So, based on that, we can decide the filter. Okay. We can uh, identify the size of semi permeable membrane. Also, it will be helpful at the transfer station for the segregation and the separation. Now we have to consider other physical properties such as field capacity. What is the field capacity? It is a total amount of moisture uh, which can be retained in the waste sample subjected to gravitational pull. Okay, how much amount of moisture content is retained in the waste uh, after the impact of the gravitational pull? Permeability of compacted waste. So compaction means you are applying the high pressure and reducing the volume because of uh, transfer like uh, transportation we need to uh, save the space so you have to apply uh, if you apply high pressure the volume will be reduced you might have studied the boyle's law p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 pressure is inversely proportional to volume same concept is applied here the permeability depends on the other properties of the solid material include porosity size distribution surface area etc also, the porosity of municipal solid waste varies from 40% to 67%. It should be like, uh, depends on what kind of waste you are going to use. So that is regarding the permeability and the field capacity. Okay. These are the important parameters. Whenever you are want to have a like uh, uh, transportation, we need to check the field capacity. So whenever you are talking about like uh, uh, designing of the filter, filter size, all those things, we need to know the permeability. How much amount of waste can be passed permeability? Okay. Uh, so these are the important points you need to consider. So now I would like to proceed uh, like for the further for discussion. I'm talking about the compressibility. What do you mean by compressibility? So if I talk about the compressibility, uh, we need to consider the young modulus, shear stress, shear strain, etc. Mechanical parameters need to be considered. Like the degree of physical changes of the suspended solid. It is mainly used for like a saving of the space, especially if you are designing a vehicle, uh, we need to design the volume. How much amount of waste can be occupied in that particular vehicle? Okay, suppose vehicle design, transportation, okay, transfer and the transport. Uh, so if you apply high pressure, if you apply high pressure, uh, then uh, what, is, what is the thing? Volume will be uh, like, uh, volume is going to be increased because application of high pressure, suppose if you are applying the high pressure, if you apply high pressure, so volume, we can uh, like volume is getting reduced so that more space okay we can occupy uh, the waste amount as 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 uh, more as possible uh, so that is why we need to consider the compressibility so we have to consider the stress and strain we have to consider so these are the important parameters uh, in the physical characteristics we found density size then field capacity permeability and the compressibility these are the parameters you have to consider now we are talking about the chemical uh, characteristics. When I talk about the chemical characteristics, for example, most of the uh, like waste material, it can be utilized for the fuel. Okay, 
So whenever you are considering the fuel, we need to consider one term called the calorific value. Okay, so uh, if you we want to consider uh, like like a calorific value, we need to check whether the given waste is suitable for like a combustion or a burning process, etc. So we must know the chemical characteristics very well. Okay, uh, then only we can uh, proceed or we can make use of that particular quantity of waste for the purpose of fuel. Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, we have to consider the heating value. If I want to select a fuel, I need to consider the heating value. How do you measure heating value in terms of kilojoule per kilogram? Okay. Uh, so there is one device called Bohm calorimeter. Using the Bohm calorimeter, you can identify, you can calculate how, what is the total, what is the calorific value of that particular fuel. Based upon the calorific value, you can decide uh, whether the given waste is suitable for uh, fuel or not. Else you can neglect uh, otherwise, you can directly go for disposal. You can check, you can accept the given quantity of waste, whether it is suitable for combustion or not, or uh, like uh, will it produce suitable energy or not, kilojoule per kilogram. Organic material yield energy only when dry. Also, the ash content of the waste which uh, reduces the proportion of the dry organic material. So, ash content should be as low as possible. So, it supports the high amount of combustion. If the combustion is very proper, so ash content will be reduced. So these are the important factors you need to consider. Uh, now we'll be discussing about uh, the heating value of different uh, material. This is just for your information. I have collected from one data. Uh, from that, you can see the different ranges of calorific value. Okay. So we can say that the plastic is having very high calorific value. From this data says that it is having very high caloric value. So, but it is most dangerous uh, by open burning of plastic in the open areas, not at all. Uh, eco one of the uh, not at all economically uh, sustainable development. Okay, it is again sustainable development because we are creating the air pollution. So uh, the heating value varies from material to material. So heating value will be expressed in terms of kilogram per kilojoule, kilojoule per kilogram. Fine. So other properties actually called a non-combustible material. If I talk about the non-combustible material like a glass, ceramic, metal, dust, etc., all are actually called non-combustible material. So uh, here these materials are not suitable for combustion. Okay. Uh, similarly, lipid. So what is a lipid? Lipid is actually the uh, some like a waste like uh, oil. Suppose oil, vegetable oils. If you are dealing with the vegetable oil, fats, then grease. So the auto industries, bulk amount of grease is going to be considered as a waste. So in that way, we, we, we can observe more amount of lipid content is available. Uh, especially like a cooking, garbage, uh, oil and the fats. Such kind of waste products, if you observe, you will be getting more amount of lipid contents. Uh, lipid having high heating value, it's about uh, 38,000 kilojoule per kilogram. But it is less soluble and it may lead uh, po 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 water pollution. Okay, it will create like, uh, uh, so we can say that just like a layer, creation of layer in the water body. So that oxygen content will be reduced. So it affects the aquatic orga organism. Okay, so that is another issue. So lipid is another important chemical uh, characteristics, chemical content or chemical property. I can say uh, it is most applicable, especially uh, dealing with the cooking oil, etc. Okay, cooking oil, grease, auto industries. Carbohydrates are actually mainly apply applicable for the food and yard waste. Also, like vegetable leaves. Most of the biodegraded waste, the major content is carbohydrate. It comprises of CO2, carbon dioxide, water, and the methane. Okay, decomposing carbohydrates attract the flies and rats, rodents. Okay, uh, it, uh, uh, it it creates more disease factors. It will act, it, it it attracts more disease factors. So, uh, decomposition of carbohydrate type waste, you have to be very careful. Better you have to prepare a cover. If you go for like a direct land disposal, it is always create the layers as well as covers. Okay, I think it's clear to all. Moving on to the discussion, uh, proteins. So. How the what is the impact of uh, proteins? Like uh, most of the compound containing like a uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, especially like C six H twelve O six, C six, especially sugar O six. Here, this is one um, protein content is available. Uh, the food and agricultural waste that is a major uh, like uh, the main content of proteins are food and agricultural waste. Okay, so uh, that we have to take care. Uh, the it may create like a water like uh, it reduces. Uh, the oxygen content of water how because of like uh, if you if the proteins uh, are like uh, if the proteins are uh, 
like spread through the water most of the algae are started growing because of the growth of algae the oxygen content is getting reduced uh, this will negatively severely impacting on the aquatic organism uh, those who present inside the water they are not able to get the sufficient amount of oxygen ultimately that will lead the extinction of the such kind of or, or, or organism so next is actually called a natural fibers like uh, uh, the main source is food and yard waste so highly combustible and uh, most of the like fiber type material that is suitable for incineration process incineration is very much costly but it's a, like just like a partial oxidation and uh, it will be conducting in a closed chamber called incinerator other one is actually synthetic organic material especially plastic it is highly resistant to biodegrade biodegradation and the, most of the plastic synthetic material that will be suitable for recycling plastic there are two type of plastic one is thermoplastic other one is called a thermosetting plastic thermoplastics are suitable for recycling where thermosetting plastic it is quite uh, impossible for performing the recycling operation a non combustible material glass ceramic metal you need to be very careful while segregating so there is one analysis called ultimate analysis the purpose of ultimate analysis to understand the chemical characteristics in the sense analyze the waste to determine the proportion of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur uh, this method uh, with theoretical method we can calculate the a percentage of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur okay so we need to compute there are certain formulas based on that we can easily analyze uh, the pr percentage of uh, like carbon hydrogen oxygen by using the uh, calculation fine that is generally called ultimate analysis so if you perform ultimate analysis obviously i'll be understanding i can uh, surely say that uh, this much of percentage of carbon is available in the certain amount of waste hydrogen is also this much of contribution oxygen like that i can uh, easily predict other one is called the proximity analysis what is the meaning of proximity analysis it is very important in evaluating the combustion properties of a waste so by conducting the proximity analysis we will predict the given amount of waste material is suitable for combustion or not can it be utilized for burning purpose or open air burning in the open air or not so we can pr predict percentage of moisture content percentage of volatile matter percentage of fixed carbon then some kind of non combustible material we can easily identify the composition that is called a proximity analysis in this session i have discussed about the chemical characteristics as well as physical characteristics first of all i have discussed some physical characteristics such as uh, density size field capacity etc then chemical characteristics i have discussed about the calorific value then uh, i could identify the different contents like uh, protein carbohydrates lipid etc so i we studied about different type of analysis like uh, ultimate analysis and proximate analysis this will be helpful to identify the chemical composition within the waste so that that's all about the session let me know if you have any queries i request everybody to uh, like this video if really if you if you really pleased with this okay i request you to share this video to your friends those who are preparing for the competitive university examination thank you so much for watching this video happy learning